Sunday, our own Dan O'Neill is going to talk about uh, Smart Chicago Collaborative's efforts to engage the public in testing some of these ideas that happen. Dan, mm -hmm. take it away. Awesome. Thank you. You can pull it up. I'll uh, make it go over to the next year. Okay. So hi, I'm Dan, and wow, so that was pretty, um, those were two really specific and interesting examples of ways to engage people. The thing I like about it is that you, you didn't, you just do it, right? I mean, it just makes sense to you already, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have um, this meetup this way, because I think that we're... We're just, frankly, getting around to that. So I have some links, um, and then that's my presentation. So it's on the internet. Uh, so I got a preamble. Apps are awesome, but the thing is not the thing. So I've, I've been around for a little while, and <clears throat> I've done some stuff. So this is me <laughs> in 2005. I was on Fox News because I made a thing that was nice, right? I, 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 I put together a... Uh, rider to rider communication tool, basically using this thing called UPOC, which was a free website. Um, it was freaking awesome. Before Twitter, it was a SMS group group SMS tool that allowed you to create a group around anything and have controls over the unit. We had ended up having 500 people in this rider to rider uh, CTA communication tool, where people were able to say, "Hey, uh, the service is out at Sedgwick." Uh, and I just heard this garbled message over the loudspeaker, but I think it said this. And then, um, but anyway, the details aren't that important. What's important is that it was 2005, and I did something. And I thought it was the most awesome thing in the world. And I got on TV, and it was like the most awesome thing ever. And, and, um, but it wasn't, right? Because um, the thing is not the thing. Uh, the app is not the thing. Um, so attention can be cool but fleeting. That was one example of attention was cool and fleeting. I was part of another thing, Every Block. Uh, I helped start this site called Every Block. Every Block got an amazing amount of attention, um, an amazing amount of of lauditude and is that a word of laud lauds? What is this? You know, people liked it, right? Um, nobody used it. Uh, you know, this is some of us did. Right. Some of us did. I understand this, and I know we have people. Yeah. How you doing? Um, some people did, but that's 150,000. And we're in 16 cities, you know, total visits on 150,000 with a total user base of, of possibly 30 million. You know, it, it didn't have a significant amount of penetration. Let's just be honest. So, this is my point is that a lot of attention, you know, Fox News on TV, things on Twitter. Crunch base, tech crunch. Wait, is, that, uh, is that weekly? Sorry, well, people days? caring. This is monthly, bro. That's what I'm getting at. <laughs> this is monthly numbers. Okay, this is one of the deep dark secrets, right? Of like, why they close every block? I don't know. Math. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be a jag off, right? I mean, let's just. This is what I mean. This is what I'm telling you a story of how I got here, right, to where I am. So, um, attention can be cool but fleeting. Are we serving people, right? Um, so getting deeper into it. What's that? Right. It's awesome. Uh, latitude, right. There you go. So anyway, Scott Robin, of course, is the king of everything. Uh, he was mentioned earlier. Scott's in charge of the world, secretly. Um, <laughs> everything Scott does, I just watch it and try to do things like it. But anyway, this was a, a, a precursor to uh, what I want to show you, is that Scott basically created a system that allowed you to authenticate with GitHub and associate your GitHub account with where you live, and then hopefully associate that with um, your alderman so you can make civic apps that, that serve, you know, that, that, that have some connection to, you know, the, the community. Um, and here's, here, look at that. Wow. This, we've seen this map, haven't we? There's nothing, right? Down here. We've seen this map before. Um, this is a sad map, right? This is the map of particip of, this is, this is, I don't need to say anything else. Anyway, um, I don't like that map. I hate that map. That map drives me crazy, and we see it a lot. So I've come around to understand the people are the thing. Um, so I started writing about it. Uh, so this is in January, and I and I wrote this this post, turning civic hacking into civic innovation. 
and um, talking about the history of why you know there seems to be a lot of energy here in Chicago, and and just taking a look at it, I'm very much interested in the history of technology. I think we have a rich baseline. We have a long history of public data projects. Um, you know, uh, and and talked about all sorts of things that have been going on. There's an engaged development committee. There clearly there's a government that cares. Um, there's support from institutions. What's missing? The people. Even though Chicago has a very rich history of engaging the people, including the fact that the fight against redlining was centered here in Chicago, one of the greatest victories of the people of the last century, the fight against mortgage redlining and uh, and um, I, I, what I just the only way to describe it, right? The battle against against redlining, where people couldn't get a freaking mortgage in particular neighborhoods, that led to uh, a lot of trouble. Uh, restrictive here's, covenants. Thank you. Restrictive covenants. Um, here's another example. Everybody loves the CTA bus tracker apps, and I I was involved in a lot of this myself. One thing that I was when I was researching this, I connected the dots. You know, in the 1980s, and I here in Chicago, I remember specifically in the mid 80s. Uh, running across uh, protests of disabled people, quadriplegics, um, blocking access to the train or the bus for me. And I remember being completely bewildered by why these, I mean, like really severely disabled quadriplegics were blocking my access and I didn't understand them and I was bothered by them, of course, intrigued and all, all these crazy things at once. And in fact, they were part of this amazing movement in this actual court case called Access Living versus the CTA that led to uh, uh, the American with Disabilities Act, flat out, flat out. Also led to a court case against the CTA that in part led them to install GPS in every single bus so that they could allow for the, to know where the bus is so then they could have a loudspeaker system that says we're at, at North and, and Clyburn. Which then of course, uh, let, hi Carol, then, of course, led to um, all these bus tracker apps. So I saw this this thing that started in the in the mid '80s and led to something that ended it that bothered me. That ended up being the most important one of the most important things in my life. And I wanted to shorten that cycle. Who are the the the, the people who are bothering me right now? Who are the people I don't know about? They're bothering everybody else that I don't know about right now. And what data are they going to uncover? Can we shorten that cycle from 20 years to a month and a half? So I'm somewhat obsessed with this at the time, is finding these people. So, um, so my job revolves around here at Chicago, uh, uh, Smart Chicago Club. It revolves around helping people bring into this movement, this movement I would call, you know, the open data, the open government movement. This is just one project where I, I led to, to some failure that led me to do this. Um, Bruce, you had some of these meetings, right? We had this Illinois Open Technology Challenge. I had this mission to bring government developers and communities together in a common mission, use public data and technology to, you know, make lives better, right? And I did a really good job bringing government developers together. We had some awesome meetings of, you know, at, down at the SSMMA and in Belleville, Illinois, and I got on the train and the Amtrak. It was just, you know, it was, I'm in Rockford, I'm in Champaign. Everything was great on the government and developer side, and I think we've been making a lot of strides. I couldn't get a single, I call them actual humans, uh, <laughs> actual humans to arrive. I was on TV, the 10 o'clock news, doing a stand-up spot. I could not get a single. There was a $15,000 prize for this. I couldn't get any residents to show up and actually talk about what their needs are. So, m a miserable failure, uh, which is off. We often we like miserable failure, right? <laughs> so it was a miserable fa failure. Um, I started writing about it, and then um, and then you know. So then I came up with this concept um, of the cut group. <clears throat> so uh, people like money. I've learned. Um, so let's give people money to uh, test out civic apps. So <clears throat> the idea is that um, you know there's a large and growing community of civic hackers, but it doesn't really participate. Doesn't really uh, uh, <clears throat> make a difference. It doesn't really make get us anywhere. Um, they never get connected. So we have this simple form: <clears throat> name, address, phone, a couple screening questions. Did you vote in the most recent election? Did you ever call 301? But very really non-obtrusive. The most specific stuff we get to is device, which um, 
I'll show you our tool in a moment that, that Chris Ganson made, but it's it's really cool data. We find out you know what devices people have um, all over the city. So we asked this, and we've been doing okay on it. Um, we uh, so here's the model, right? So we publish this thing. So that's the precursor, the uh, going deeper, and then here's the model. And I want to drill down into this a little bit because. Um, because of the audience, you know, we're in this. So I want to I want to explain how we do it. I want to even talk about the tools of how we do it, this cut group. And I want to talk about the process for it. And then I want to hear what you think. And I want everybody who makes an app to sign up for the cut group. Um, so Chris Ganson is over here. He made all the software that helps us do this, including what we stole from old boy uh, Robin, right? And what did we do? Uh, wow, this is a better map. We've got... 13 testers in the fourth ward, and and in uh, 13 and 24. You know, we're we're getting there. We're really trying to get. We're I for God's sake, 15. Anybody living the 15th to the 31st? Can't get anybody there. Um, but I will. We uh, do a lot of marketing out in the street. We have flyers that go into public libraries and public computer centers, and uh, we uh, you know hire people that do email marketing. Uh, mainly around uh, VIP clubs, so they've got a list of 3,000 people who are looking for, you know, the the where to go on Friday night, and we're like, yo, you want five bucks to test out a bus tracker app, and it's it's working, <laughs> it's working. Um, uh, we're pretty proud of this. This is working. So we have. So let's jump into the tool and talk about our set. So there's. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, uh, how we make this, because this is kind of a classic. I'm not very smart and I can't make anything. So I always come up with kludgy ways to do things, and then I interact with smarter people that actually then make them better, right? Um, so I'm like, okay, well, I like Wufu. Wufu's awesome. It has great APIs, and it allows you to send the data anywhere. So and it's really great structured data. So we use Wufu to collect the information. All that, you know, that form I showed you, that's Wufu. Next, MailChimp, which I like a lot. MailChimp is, you know, it's just one of many email newsletter system. But I like it again because it's got a good API and it's got good in and outs. So I'll show you the in and outs in a minute. But, um, and, uh, you know, so then we, so we gather all the people and then we, you know, have to um, uh, work with them to set up the groups. So what we're doing, our first actual test, we did one test with an actual hardware test, which was, this is our second one, but the first one was we had these, uh, you got one of those, Bruce, right? The uh, Freedom, Freedom Pop. Pop, how to work out. Did you ever fill out the form, by the way? That reminds me. I, I did a video. Right, all right, but we need to get the form filled right. out so I can get it all in there. But anyway, um, so uh, it's a 4G hardware method for connecting the Internet, and we tested it for, in part, the mayor's office because they were going to be launching this thing. And they were like, does this even work? And I'm like, oh, we got 400 people around the city. Let's, let's test to see if it works. So we even sent out emails to them. We're like, yo, do you want a, a free way to connect the Internet? Let us know. So we do this classic sort of like, you know, screening. And it's working. Um, so the um, – a tool that we are going to test, and I know this isn't staging, but I'm just, so I just go here, Tom. Staging, it's CPS dot, no, what is it, staging dot? So Tom Campare created this thing called Go to School. Um, you answer four questions to get your get to your Chicago public school on time. So I'm going to take one step back and talk a little bit about method, about like why did, this is a platform. So this is a platform, so I'm talking about how we, what we made. We have 400 people in this group in four months across the city. It becomes a platform for talking about life, right, things that matter to you, in a non-hot way. Is there a hotter thing in this city at this time than going to school and where you're going to school? Right? No. It's a pretty freaking hot topic, right? We're approaching, and by the way, just by dint of nature, I don't like hanging out in really hot topics. I just, I'm like, I hear my mom calling me, I gotta have dinner, I'm like, I, you know, I would, you don't see me at these meetings where everybody's yelling about a billing that's gonna go up, or, you know, uh, you know, I'm not a NIMBY guy, I don't even like hanging out with people who are NIMBY people, I just, I just, I wanna go back home and get on the internet, 
You know what I mean? So I don't. I, it's just my nature. I'm not into that. I, but I like interacting with people and finding out what they what they need. So this gives us a platform to talk to people about their lives, how they're going to go to school, without talking about whether they think the school should be closed or all these things. Right. So it's a different platform. It's a different way to approach them. We're also approaching them in a supplicant fashion. Right. The motto is if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work. And when I've I've done this in informal ways, with that's another thing I didn't really mention. I've been going out to community groups and showing different tools that we've made, and uh, you know, uh, Alderman Emma Mitz, you know, 5400 North uh, West North Avenue at 8:30 in the morning, talking to you know block club leaders, right? And showing them and having them sit there on their phone and hit the website that I'm demoing to them, and getting live feedback, and it's the most amazing thing. Um, so when you do it that way and you come to them in and not in a fake supplicant fashion either. Not like, oh, what do you think of our of our plan? You know, or it, it's it's like, yeah, it, 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 if this if you don't like this, there's something wrong with it. And actually saying, yeah, we're gonna change it. So it's a new it's a different model, it's a model for engaging when we talk a lot about civic engagement, and it's a different model for that. So uh, we're gonna do this uh, for Tom on uh, the twenty eighth next week, Tuesday, uh, and we have two different types of tests. So let me hop into that, um, and then I'm going to show you the tool. So um, actually, I'm going to show you the art. So the, this is where the, um, the rubber meets the road on my silly web-based tools, because we have to do some relative. Here's, what I've, here's a concrete thing that I discovered. It's actually really hard to find relevant people to talk to and to get them to show up at a library in Uptown or Englewood on a Tuesday night at six o'clock, because Tom, so you're, you know, you care. Who do you want to talk to? As the developer, he's a, the, Tom is a client of the Cut Group, right? We care about him. We want to serve him. He wants to talk to relevant people, people who this fall are going to be bringing one or more ch children to a Chicago public school. We've reduced the universe smaller, right? Now, but I have 400 to choose from, so I set out a blast of 400 people. I've got seven people showing up on each night. I want more, but I, I think we're going to get there. But that's out of 400, offering them $20 in a gift card, I mean $20 in bus fare. It's hard. It's hard to do the segmenting. So, so let's talk a little bit about the segmenting. I want to show you this, uh, and this is with fake data. So I don't want you to think that I'm breaking the privacy policy of... Um, my users, but I want to show you this tool because I think you're going to dig it from a technology perspective. And um, I do not want you to remember me. I do not, in fact. So we get this cool. It's called patterns. Since it's the cut group, we call it patterns, right? You know, if you, you cut out a pattern, you like it, Joe. You're with me, right? So I don't have the logo yet, but right. So, um, so we've got you know some some metrics here, and uh, we've got the signups, and we've got this you know this concept of uh, submissions. Uh, we use the Google uh, 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 Places API, so we can see if it's a multi-unit building or what kind. You know, we get information about what's up. You know, and um, so. Submissions. So then we're able to use the API to um, uh, get these uh, submissions, you know? Well, birth school, two kids, eligible, right? So we're able to do all that, and then we're able to sort. So I'm able to say how many Samsungs are in the <coughs> fifth space delimited, right? Fifth, seventh, ninth, seven, uh, 34th wards, um, and we can segment by that. These are all the segment. These are all right. So um, it's a relatively sophisticated way to uh, reach people of a, of of whatever uh, type, and obviously we can segment on any question we've asked, um, and we're able to catch that. Um, so we dig that. We have this a model for events, right? So then we associate people with events. And then we have the concept of an application, right? But the application is associated with a program. So the program is safe passes to schools. There could be five apps that do it, five interventions or five you know, methods. Um, so 
we uh, think this is pretty cool uh, software that you can't get anywhere else. Um, and, uh, you know, we just describe it. And but, so this model, we're digging it, right? So we, this, again, we're having this one. It's going to be on Thursday. These are the people. It's at the Uptown Library. Um, we're also devoted to the idea that we go to people, right? This is not, these are not downtown. This is the public computer centers all across the city. And that's another thing is trying to find the right location, you know. So, oh, also, we have good distribution throughout the, the city. And even the responses were really well distributed. We had 14 people in north, 14 people in, in south, and then west, even if, well, north and south and notwithstanding west, some of them were distributed west. But, um, and then we're going to do sort of an ad hoc. That's the other method. So now let's talk a little bit about methodology because um, we're pretty serious about it. Um, so one is uh, a classic UX methodology, right? And we're partnering with uh, uh, Julie Harpering, who's an awesome um, uh, UX designer who works at Orbitz, and she's just volunteering her time. And she developed this whole um, script, and it's 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 legit, right? It's like this is I don't know how to do this, and she's she's good at this, and she did it. So we're gathering information about. And we work with, with, with Tom on this, and this, you know, these are the kind of things that he wants to <laughs> test. And we're going to find out, as you can tell, more than just whether or not they like the app, right? And one thing I love about this, one of these questions, what is it? Um, who do you call if your kid can't get there? Can you describe the process? What was it? How do you check in with the school for other things, right? Probing devices used if participant mentions online or electronics. How do you figure out the kid's school schedule? You know, like we're gonna j just find out about that stuff. But again, this is all. This is not rocket surgery. This is, but it's a, it's a, it's a domain of that I didn't know much about, and now we're adding it here, and we're publishing all of this stuff, um, you know, on GitHub and 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 in ways so that people can reproduce it. Another methodology is the classic focus focus group, which I'm more used to. You know, it's like me this. Right, and then people yelling, "I don't like that." Make it green, make it blue. That's what I'm more used to, and I'm good with. And then the developer will be there. Um, and another is the one, like I said, we go to a community meeting. So it's like those—they're not necessarily getting paid. They're, it's less scientific. I do—I always do air quotes when I say scientific on a social science <laughs> thing. I have a degree in anthropology, and I—I. I, I, I didn't really buy into it, like seriously, like you, you, you found a tooth and you're telling me this entire hominid exactly what it looks like. I just don't, you know, I, I have a problem with some of the social sciences. But anyway, this is scientific as, you know, you get in these, in these groups, but this is, this is definitely less. So uh, lastly, I just want to talk about the, the, the broader mission. So I talked about the broader mission as being a platform for engagement with humans that is beyond a fight, beyond a particular policy or a particular, you know, should we do this or, or do that? Um, but even even more, it's um, even more than just, you know, providing feedback to a developer about a particular app. It's also to hopefully get them to get into the game, right? I would love it if out of these 400 people, they become developers. They create the million dollar, billion dollar company that they don't give us any feedback. And they say, I'm going to walk away and I'm going to make a better app than yours and, and not, to, you know, um, because we should stimulate the entire economy uh, for this type of space. Because here at Smart Chicago, um, we care about creating the civic innovation sector of the technology industry. I think it's a very big deal. I think it's worth billions of dollars. And I think that it's time, again, from a maturity model point of view, for developers to start thinking that way. Because if real new and, and getting out of philanthropy funding models, getting out of getting out of of, of uh, you know uh, weekend projects and oh I stayed up all night beating myself up over this. That's great. We have to move forward into sustainable products that meet the needs of humans who are willing to pay for it uh, so that we can prosper. So that's what I have. Any questions on any of that? Ben? Yes. So the um, what you what you're showing now had fake data with 
participants. Yep. How many participants do you have on the database? 398. No, 300. Yeah, 398. These are not your mates. These are people who've not you've not met before. Yeah, that's the yeah. That's good. I, these are people that I have never met before with addresses that make me deeply excited, like with five digits. Okay, so I mean, like <laughs> five-digit addresses, I jump up and down when I see them on the, on the on email. Can I? Can we just go back to it for a second? To what? The fake one day head up. Yeah. With the uh, with Tom compares. It's Tom, right? Tom's yeah. Tom's uh, simulated um, test. Yeah. How is it possible for someone like me who is trying to develop something to um, post a question and and gain this type of get an opportunity to work with some of these people? This is what we're missing right yeah. now. Yeah, if you make an app and just say, yo, go here. Does it have to be a finished app at this point, or can it be no. something that we can test? Does it have to be a finished app? You have to be able to show it to people. We can show it to people. That's all not. you got. You're okay. done. Okay. Yeah. I, think, uh, I think another place that I would really love to use your feedback also is at the paper. That's where we are. Because that's, that's super important before, before you even talk about it. Well, actually, it's the first place you should probably talk to the developer about. That's what we are. Yeah. Normal people take the common path. A programmer would be like, well, what type of work are doing? Sure. And so really th that, that's when you really get a feeling of how much programming is really behind the break before it comes. So I'm just curious. That's probably a good place to do user testing also. Do we, do we apply? Do yeah. Fill out this form, and then we'll go the. I, I haven't done a paper prototype test, but smart people can help us figure out how to do it. Honestly, it's, it's almost the same as doing what we're doing. Okay. We're going about it like old school approach. We're like meeting community um, group organizers and asking them can we can we show up when they do a group meeting. Yeah, that's really interesting you say that. Because um, people ask me, especially in philanthropy and community development. Well, why why don't you go to group number ten or group number eleven? Uh, I think that's good. I think that's nice. Um, I believe that we need to have independent relationships with human beings, mm -hmm. and that are that are outside of, maybe right next to, the relationship they have with the community-based organization. That's wonderful, but I would rather. I, I just it feels more. I like the methodology. I think I th I just like the methodology of just saying, humans, do you like money? Sign up. <laughs> that's that's what we do. Yeah. Did you answer? Um, so based on the text that's on the form for the group, are these primarily mobile applications, or are they browser, or is it like a crossover? Because the school one you showed looked like it was probably a more focused towards mobile, but then it was just stretched out to your layout. So what type I, of applications are you really trying to focus on? Any application, but it has to be web-based, and I probably have a bias. Any application. I think, just personally, I have a bias toward responsive design and works on any device for, you know, for all the reasons that everybody else develops. So, how many apps are you currently working on right now? Just the school one, or are there other ones that are also like uh, this form out? What would I likely be testing? Are there several? Oh, as a recipient, as a participant, as a what? As a cut. Oh. Uh, as a member, like how many actually being sent into the school when I'm signing up for? A you probably have three on right now, but you know. Okay. Um, it's you're talking as a participant. It's completely hand over. It's com It's it's hand work. This is not a well oiled machine yet. You know, it's like I don't know. Well, hopefully, we'll do four more by the end of the year, maybe. Um, I just want to note that I tried to go on my phone yeah. to sign up, and it's not um, really doable with a phone. The form itself is like super tiny, and the words all sort of run together. So when I sign up, from just, you just hurt me. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you're you asking me a people what type person. of phone yeah. they use, yeah, sorry there's an opportunity that. to even grab what device they're signing up on. Especially if you're trying to target like mobile. Okay. Yeah, we are. That's a bummer. So yeah. signed up on my phone on Tuesday. And it was fine. Okay. I mean, I I can do it, but I'm not sure I really want to. Because all my drop downs are about this big. I might be Wufu level, but yeah. All right, we gotta fix it. Is there a question about metadata? Are you? Is this still a fluid process? And how did you? I mean, I assume it is, but how did you? How did you whittle down? And are all the fields required? And have you found some more valuable than others? In terms of just the school project, 
I saw those four questions, but you have to fill out a form, and as related, you you know, like you can search people's phones and you can search other things. Have you found that it's something more valuable than others? Uh, how'd you go about? It seemed like you farmed out the metadata questions, but I'm, I'm not being presumptuous. Farmed out? Well, you had a list of all the questions that you said somebody was looking to answer, or you were looking to answer. Is that where you got your metadata from, in terms of like what what you what so, you're actually whittling down to look at? In other words, right. When so you have the data. The the thought was as little as possible. First of all, my first cut was no demographic. I don't care how much you make, um, and in part because in Chicago. Uh, uh, geography is the destiny, right? Mm -hmm. I think that that mm -hmm. we, we get a lot out of exact. <laughs> we get their exact address because we have to we send it to them in the mail. Okay. So exact address is like all I need. Secondly, I'm just not frankly, I'm not into knowing people's number. Income just doesn't. I just not that guy, right? It just doesn't. I'm not. I don't. So we have the address. We had two screening questions, and I was super serious about devices. Because I I find it as as you know what we just talked right I mean I've been in web development for about 15 years and I realized how important browser compatibility you know that that knowing that information I find extremely valuable that's like the most important metadata to me and then yeah secondly on that first screener I'm sorry the the go to school screener it was all the questions were designed to eliminate error. Yeah. That was what it was designed for. It was not for like to really know things. It was like, really? Do you have a kid? No, I'm saying, do you? Are you responsible for taking? You know, it was like yeah. public school, and then you get the address, and and it has. I've been super surprised how also the it's free form field for the device. Yeah. Super well formed data. I'm actually so super surprised at how well people know what device they have, and then there are devices that I then Google. I'm like, what? I didn't even know existed. Motorola makes a hell of a lot of phones. That's one thing I learned. I mean, it's crazy <laughs> names. I'm like, what? And then there's a couple that are uh, custom built. I love that. I found this one, Eads. There's this Eads, E-E-D-S or something. It's like an Ubuntu box of some sort. It's great. I have a point on that. When I signed up, I had a different device than what I do now. So, and, I mean, is there a way to update that? or There's not. It just, yeah, it's just... So, what if is. you show up? Um, uh, I'm gonna know more. That's the other thing. I get them there, and then we'll be like, huh. you know, and we're gonna be watching. We're gonna get the device name, mm -hmm. but we're pretty serious about making it lightweight and yeah, not totally. having user counts right. and not. You I know. think that's right. How do you feel about the experience of being screened and all that? Has it been it's pretty great. good? Yeah. Okay. I haven't gotten to test anything yet. But. Right. <laughs> how, um, how well is the money working? Do you have people repeatedly using it to test? Or is it they try it once and they lose the novelty of it? We have one person who is in a, she's, she's trying to steal from us <laughs> <laughs> at this time uh, on North Drake. Uh, I'll leave it at that. Um, and then she wrote an email, well, I know somebody who didn't get their money yet. And I'm like, yeah, tell them to write me back. Um, but no, so we've only done two, and there's been no crossover actually. I mean, we have people who got free freaking devices to connect to the internet. That was actually eight people, and none of them are in the second test, because I think it's because of the screen. It's just su it's great to have super specific things, um, and that screen for the did you, did, did you get the 4G test? I think I did, but I didn't do oh. it because I was like, I don't need free internet. Yeah. <laughs> I do. And I just got it. <laughs> it, what, it, it's a zip code thing, Sal. Oh. We were given that it's only available in some areas, so we screened for the zip, and we didn't send out the email. Mm -hmm. Where do you here? Bridgeport. Mm -hmm. Outside. God bless them. <laughs> I got a question. Uh, Specifically targeting the security aspect. Of um, I understand that you said that you're using Wufu and you, you're using third party software and things yep. like that. But when you compile the data, uh, let's say, you got, for lack of better terms, a freaky JSON that's just like, oh, okay, here's the repository of children addresses and things yep. like that. Are there safeguards in place for that within your framework? Jansen? Uh, we don't store children as a, as a, as a rule. Uh, 
also, it's behind a login and SSL, so we take reasonable precautions to get to it. Anybody else? Please sign up. Is that man here like money? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to show the flyer and I couldn't find it. Can I send bitcoins yet? <laughs> <laughs> Bitcoin? No, we're. Uh, well, we, we might get there, though. I'm going to show you my flyers just, if I can just as we're wrapping up. Hey, can people please uh, eat, my, eat my hot dogs? Um, <laughs> and uh, take all that, please. Here you go. Check out this flyer. First, I ever did this one. I did this first one in my program. I uh, Kyla. You may know Kyla. I'm like, yo. Uh, you know, sign up. And then Kyla was like, what are you doing? She's like, you gotta be like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right. This shit's working. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. I'm like, we get like 10 signups and all these amazing addresses, like 97, 98. I'm like, what happened? She's like, yeah, he's down there right now. Oh. <laughs> Handing out stuff out. So, anyway, it's working. A B testing right there. Um, all right, who wants candy? Go ahead. So, let's just get one big round of applause for all the